you think and you look historically, uh, marijuana was not prohibited until 37. And so up until that time, you actually had a legal viable market. And just because of market shares and uh, let's say competing market interest, uh, as it pertains to say with industrial hemp, you had uh, Randolph Hearst who wanted to ensure that uh, wood fiber became the fiber for paper. You had uh, DuPont and other chemical companies who wanted to uh, see cotton move forward, and so they wanted to uh, demonize uh, marijuana. And so, and if you look at what happened with the prohibition of alcohol, you had basically the same setup. It's just taken many more years because of other, uh, uh, let's say, interference and obstacles that came into the, in place. But clearly, I think you will in fact see a change and a re, uh, and a rebirth of an industry. And one of the things that's very important to me is ensuring that local farmers will have the opportunity to benefit. Uh, what I uh, think not only for the hemp, uh, industrial hemp, but also in the uh, marijuana for cannabis, that that's where we should allow for the gro uh, growing to occur. And you can see small businesses, uh, and it's going to be a birth of an industry that's going to bring a lot of new jobs, a lot of new jobs to our communities. Uh, and you can see what has happened just in Colorado and what, we're, what we'll be watching in the next couple of months in Washington State to see how that plays out. And clearly we're in a position, knowing that we're the grass seed capital of the world, that we can grow and it's been shown that we will in fact be able to uh, be in the market on a, on a national basis and actually uh, uh, be branded for the product that we have. Will anything happen to people currently in prison for marijuana-related convictions? And what about people being charged at the time of legalization if it should happen? Well, the way it works is that at the time of the conviction, it was against the law. And so those convictions will stand. That does not mean that the legislature cannot uh, revisit and look at this issue on a, let's call it somewhat of a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, I expect that once uh, uh, IP 53, whatever the ballot measure number is, passes, uh, the legislature will start looking at what is the impact on our prison system uh, currently and how does it uh, pertain uh, to the changes that we made. Uh, I believe it was just in 2013 we did a remodification of uh, the penalties that a person would face if they had uh, previously as, uh, anything over an ounce was a felony. Uh, we changed that uh, through the legislative process to up to four ounces is now a misdemeanor. And so I expect that you will see at some point looking at what is the cost drivers for the prison system as to what we think we should be modifying, if anything, at that point. Uh, there's no guarantee. I mean, the, the reality is they were when they were convicted, it was in fact a, a felony. And so uh, just the passage of it will not change that. Uh, regarding the other part of Rick, Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what about, what about people currently oh. trial? Well, if they're, uh, I guess it's going to be based on when the charging instrument uh, comes through. The reality, we're going to have this uh, period of time over a year from uh, basically 2015 up to 2016 that you're going to have the transition. I would expect that you'll, what you'll see in many of the district attorney's offices and in, uh, that are the only district attorney's offices do felony work, they will start looking at what the reality is as to what the people have actually passed. And I do believe that you'll see charging practices change based on the passage of IP53. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to mention, you know, under the letter of the law, you know, nothing changes. Uh, the, the legislature could very well take that issue up. And additionally, we've, we've, saw, we've seen, especially in Denver and Seattle, once the law passed, we saw prosecutors like drop a bunch of charges against people. So I think you will see, practically speaking, an improvement in how people are treated, um, but uh, we may need a legislative fix, especially as we look forward towards how much money we're spending on these cases, locking these people in prison. If somebody happened to be in prison for four or five ounces, you know, at their home, which would now be allowed under new approach, I think that would be something that uh, the legislature, even potentially uh, certain judges, um, definitely could look at. What have we learned from Colorado and Washington, and what have these two states done especially well or poorly from what you've seen? Sure. I think that uh, in Washington, uh, the bill is fairly poor. It doesn't allow people to grow their own. It, does, it limits the possession to an ounce. 
If you have uh, over 28 grams in Washington, you have a misdemeanor. If you have over 40 grams, you'll go to jail. So this is dramatically better than that. And uh, in Colorado, they have a particularly onerous system of regulation that requires video cameras on the grow site from seed to sale with video feed to the state store. It's definitely over-regulated. Uh, we've seen prices of seven and eight hundred dollars an ounce in Washington, and uh, several hundred dollars an ounce in Colorado. We're not going to wipe out the black market at those prices, folks. I think uh, Initiative 53 will do that, and uh, a thirty-five dollar an ounce tax is certainly reasonable, and I think it's a lot better.